Hello and welcome to another A-Level Economics video with me, Mr Goff, for MrGoff.com. This video will focus on an introduction to the economists Smith, Hayek and Marx. Adam Smith was a Scottish economist most famous for his 1776 book, An Inquiry into the Nature and Causes of the Wealth of Nations, often just referred to as the Wealth of Nations. He believed in laissez-faire government. This is where markets are free to operate, largely without government interference. Smith believed that the invisible hand of the market would lead to the best allocation of resources. The invisible hand refers to the market forces of supply and demand, which we'll be learning a lot more about later in the course. He also described the idea of absolute advantage, that is, that a person, firm, region or country may be able to produce a particular product more efficiently than others. This led him to argue against the trade restrictions that existed in his time. This was a time when tariffs on imports and embargoes on trade with certain countries were very commonplace. Smith contended that if everyone produced what was to their absolute advantage and then traded for what else they needed, that everyone would have more so long as the trade was free. Despite his leanings towards a free market, Smith saw certain areas in which government intervention would be necessary. This is the same as we see in the countries that we call market economies today, which are not 100% market economies, but do have some government intervention. He foresaw the possibility that left unchecked, firms in the same market might come together to weaken competition and artificially increase prices. This is known as collusion. It is common for both market and mixed economies to have laws prohibiting collusion and other anti-competitive practices. Smith also acknowledged that firms might be inclined to force wages as low as possible in order to boost their profits without consideration of the need for workers to earn a living wage. It's commonplace in both market and mixed economies for the government to lay down a minimum wage that employers need to pay their workers. He also pointed out that the government needed to produce goods and services that might not otherwise be produced because they're not economically viable. That is, they might not turn a profit. This includes things like policing and the court system. The government also has a role in providing infrastructure. It would be very difficult if all roads were private and you had to pay to use each road separately. Karl Marx is a German economist, most famous for his series of books under the title Das Kapital, published in the late 1800s. Marx argued against the market economy. He described market economies as being dominated by a small ruling elite he called the bourgeoisie. He said that the bourgeoisie took advantage of the larger working class, who he called the proletariat. Marx predicted that the great discrepancy between the fortunes of the bourgeoisie, who owned the factors of production and benefited from them, and the proletariat, would cause the workers to rise up and overthrow the bourgeoisie, taking control of the factors of production for themselves. These beliefs contributed to the Russian Revolution and the rise of communism, which is the system that Lenin came up with when he took over the running of Russia and needed to find a way that the people could own the factors of production. In many cases, communist governments went on to display all the negative traits of the ruling classes they overthrew. That is, members of the government were able to live lavish lifestyles, far different and removed, from those of the people that they ruled over. This is why there are very few communist governments left, and those governments that are left are largely trending more towards market economies. Friedrich Hayek was an Austrian-British economist most famous for his 1944 work, The Road to Serfdom. He was an advocate of market economies and against planned economies. Hayek observed that increasing levels of government control, as seen in the communist government of Soviet Russia and the fascist government of Nazi Germany, lead to totalitarianism and the loss of personal freedoms. People in these countries were forced to go along with government policies, 
under threat of death or imprisonment if they disagreed. Hayek said that the poor were better off in places like the USA and UK than in Germany and Russia because at least they had their personal freedoms. He suggested that individual consumers and producers are better placed to decide how resources should be used than centralised government bodies who he felt lacked information. Hayek felt the price mechanism was an effective way to distribute resources. Hayek believed the price mechanism reflected the compromise between producers and consumers. He felt that it acted as a signal of the expectations of both buyers and sellers. If a producer were to ask too high of a price, then consumers would not buy the product, forcing them to reduce their prices. If a product is more in demand than can be supplied, then it is natural that the price will rise, causing a rationing effect on the amount that is left. That brings us to the end of this video introducing the economists Smith, Hayek and Marx. Join me again in the next video when I'll be looking at rational decision making. Use the resources at mrgoff.com to help you revise economics and until next time it's bye for now.